Hey guys, how you doing? I hope you've been having a great holiday and having some good rest. Now, I don't know if you have heard, but I have some not so good news for you. That school is back tomorrow. Dun, dun, dun! I know, right? I know. I know that school is going to look a little bit different over the next few weeks than what we're used to because we're working from home, most of us. But I thought to get us going, we should get our brains moving and learning and ready to grow as we get back into school, whether we're at home or at school. So I don't know if you've ever heard of the quiz show, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? And I know we have some pretty smart fifth graders in our parish, but I thought we'd take a little um, change on that one tonight and say, are you smarter than an Anglican minister? And that is where I'm going to ask my friendly Anglican minister friend, David Brown, onto the stage. Oh, hello. Hi, David. How are you doing? And David's going to help me out and tell me if he's smarter than an Anglican minister. Because we're both actually Anglican ministers. That doesn't work, does it? <laughs> oh, well. All right, David, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. You've got three questions. <gasps> Question one. Jesus said, love your A, bicycle, hmm. B, neighbour, C, friend, or D, lunchbox. What's it going to be, David? Well, I really love my lunchbox because it fills my tummy and makes me feel good. And I like my bicycle because I like riding around and having fun. And I love my friends. But I think Jesus talked about love being more expansive. So I'm going to say Jesus said, love your neighbour. B. Ding, 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 How many commandments did God give Moses? As Mike would say, one, 42, B, C, 100, or D, 10. What's your choice, David? Well, 100 sounds like a bit much. And 42, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't give him one. So I'm going to go for 10. 10 <gasps> commandments. You're on the Well, that... We're just firing along. Let's go to our last question, if we can get it up. Or, or, or not. Let's see if we can move it along. Hey! hey. <laughs> and tonight's final question, it was just to keep you guys waiting. David, this is a tough one. Mm. What is the church? Is it A, the building? Is it B, the best hiding place ever? Hmm. Is it C, that place we go on Sundays for donuts? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Or is it D, God's people? Hmm. What's it going to be, David? Well, the building sounds really good. I like our building. And I know that our church is the best hiding place ever. I go there to hide all the time and no one finds me. <laughs> but I'm thinking C. I'm going to go with C, Zoe. That is, church is where I go to get the best donuts from the donut man on Sunday. I'm sorry, David. Unfortunately, that's not the correct answer. What? I need to fact check that, Zoe. Well, it's actually, the answer is actually D. The church is God's people. Mm. And it's because we gather in a building every week and we do get to hide there and it does have awesome donuts. But actually none of that is the most important thing. Mm. What makes the church is not the morning tea or the music. It's the people, David. Oh. It's the people. And that's what we're going to be learning over the next few weeks is how after Jesus died and rose again, his disciples went out and shared the good news of Jesus to God's people. And that's the way that they built up the church because they built up God's people. Oh. Mm. 
So it's D. The church is God's people. There's often good donuts, but it's definitely D for God's people. All right. Seems like I'm not smarter than an Anglican minister. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time.